Cohesive devices, can you discuss how the name came about? Yeah, so um, as Synonym Art Consultation, we've always, uh, or most of our shows have revolved around the idea of how language and art intersect. So this is our first full gallery exhibition. Uh, cohesive devices are uh, grammatical units that link together sentences, clauses, or ideas, or paragraphs. Um, and we feel that as Synonym, we tend to do kind of a similar thing where kind of the linking device between lots of different artists, lots of different communities, lots of different uh, mediums. So with this show, we wanted to explore the cohesive device not only as a grammatical unit, but also as a kind of larger thematic concept. And uh, so then can you maybe describe a bit more of what's going to be in the exhibition? For sure. So the imagery is largely based around, around this text. Uh, so as a visual connection, we have always wanted to work with uh, Reza Rasai and Grand Weep. And so their, their colors, their narratives play really well off of each other. So when we proposed the idea of cohesive devices, it sparked them to just play off, riff off, off each other's work. And we went back and forth, back and forth with uh, their current work. And then kind of came up with these with these different combinations to to uh, attach attach to the text. Okay, so you're gonna have photography and a sign painting. Photography, text. Yeah. So photography by Reza Rasai and Graham Weeb, and then text by the traveling sign painters. Okay, so, yeah. right on. Um, why did you choose? Well, I sort of answered this, but I'll just if you have anything more to say. Why did you choose the two photographers you you did? Well, it's actually kind of a funny story because we, uh, Andrew and I went, we found out we had the opportunity to do this show. We went out to the lake and a cabin in Falcon Lake <laughs> and uh, we're kind of jamming on this idea of what we were going to do in this space. The obvious show for us would be, would be to paint on all the walls as a mural festival. Uh, but we wanted to focus on a different area of street art. So what we did was choose the uh, medium of wheat paste, thus going towards photography kind of has always been our it's always been our practice to bring gallery artists out onto the streets. So focusing on uh, Graham Weeb who just had a show at Flux Gallery. He's got really amazing work. Uh, and then Reza Rasai who we've just seen his his work actually on the internet. And so since they speak so well together, uh, we approached both of them and by some stars aligning, <laughs> universe working out. Uh, they had just met two weeks ago and have instantly been running around town going on all these adventures together, shooting with their point shoots and kind of creating whole separate bodies of work. So it was very meant to be that these artists are working together. Perfect. Um, can you just uh, discuss why you continue to investigate the uh, intersections between language and photography? Uh, as you did in the earlier exhibition, Homo Phonic. Yeah, so it kind of speaks to us working together. Most curators are kind of solo curators, um, so we have the pleasure and sometimes challenge of being two people coming together and doing things, but what that means is we get to bring both of our strengths to the table. So I'm uh, trained as, or my practice is as a poet, uh, traditionally, so language always, of course, is at the forefront of my mind, and Chloe's a visual artist, so She's always got the, uh, the visual palette, color palettes and visual mediums in mind. Um, and so, like Chloe said, when we went and started curating this show, it was kind of her vision of wanting to have repeated photographic images all throughout the gallery. And then I kind of went away and thought of ways that we could tie that together and kind of restrain it into a into a curatorial kind of framework within the gallery because the gallery is so big and it can yeah. it can be a bit overwhelming so you need a bit of structure and a little bit of uh, kind of a framework to work within so mm -hmm. luckily this this grammatical kind of route that I went has this natural framework built into it so each of the walls in the gallery is organized by um, a different uh, category of cohesive device so there's a wall that speaks to agreement, one that speaks to opposition, and one that speaks to uh, consequence. And so the words that are painted on the wall are examples of cohesive devices that would fit into those themes on each wall. And then we chose photos that also spoke to that and 
combinations that we thought spoke to those that curatorial framework. So it was kind of a, a nice way to impose a pre-existing framework onto an idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you talk about the importance of street art to Synonym's mandate? Uh, why you concentrate so much on street art? Totally. Um, the idea of accessible art has been our number one practice since day one, three years ago. Uh, we started in kind of small warehouse spaces, but realized that they were too isolating. They were continuing to just make art, yeah, a little bit, a little bit terrifying for people to go up and engage with um, and we just found this huge need for emerging artists to show their work and for just kind of your everyday person to experience it in their everyday. <laughs> so uh, we decided to make it more accessible by putting it to restaurants and then from there restaurants and hair salons and nightclubs and then went on to put them into the streets so doing, doing murals um, and so now we've even gone further and gone into, we have a residency program. So not only are people seeing the end product of something, they're now seeing the process itself. So it's always just made, it's always just been something that we're so passionate about, making art no matter what your income bracket, no matter what your social status, no matter if you even identify as someone who enjoys art, to have that kind of as your, as your source every single day. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, and are there, uh, as a team, are there artists or curators that have inspired you? Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of an obvious thing to say being in the graffiti gallery right now, but Pat Lazo has definitely been kind of our mentor in that uh, respect. We've traveled with him to two major mural festivals in the last couple of years and made a lot of great connections. Um, he's, of course, a talented street artist in his own right, but then also a great visionary in terms of bringing street art and uh, contemporary art together in the city, which is really kind of our main mandate of, um, we are in a gallery right now, but in the long term, you know, bringing contemporary art out of the galleries and into the streets and just expanding where contemporary art is seen. So an extension of this show to kind of segue is that these panels that we're um, pa pasting all these photos onto are going to be um, taken out of the gallery after the show has finished its run and uh, installed in the streets so people can keep their eye out for that. <laughs> and then what about thoughts just about the general thoughts about Graffiti Gallery itself, you know, how you came to discover the Graffiti Gallery and activities around there? Um, well, I actually work here. <laughs> so this is a very big part of my life and, uh, but I think just in general, the Graffiti Gallery has kind of been our partners, yeah, since we actually ran our first Made Blanche here uh, three years ago. So yeah, it's, it's kind of always been a no-brainer as far as accessibility and bending what art is and how people take it in. And through so many different mediums, through we work uh, a lot with the hip-hop community and with the music, just in the music community in general, the dance community, the video community. So since the gallery does is a house for our that whole family that we uh, we work with so many of the same people and just I think generally have the same vision. So it seems also that uh, you um, the multi multidisciplinary aspect mm -hmm. of mixing music, uh, dance, painting, and all that seems yeah. very important. You can maybe make a comment on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that all falls under the notion that's at the core of Graffiti Gallery, which is creating communities and building communities. So we don't just see going into a neighborhood and just painting a big mural and walking away from it and just saying, well, there you go, that's, that's the beautiful mural and you can enjoy it. Um, our murals do, of course, stay up afterwards, but um, we always activate the community um, through the art itself that's going on the walls, but then also through community programming that brings in all of those communities, dance, hip hop. Um, also working alongside local businesses in the city is very important to us. We don't see the art world as being an, in an ivory tower. It's more of a, we see it as having a potential to just spread into everybody's life, as Chloe said, mm -hmm. and more on an everyday level. So it's just natural that when you're building communities that you're gonna involve as many talented people at doing the things that they do best. And the more people you can get involved and collaborate with, the better. Cool. Last question, um, without maybe giving away too much, uh, talk, can you talk a bit about your future plans or what you hope to be doing in the next while? 
Yeah. Well, we have a few programs that do continue um, throughout the year, yearly. We're still um, looking forward to working on this residency program through the Tallest Poppy that Chloe was mentioning. Um, and then our big plans are mostly revolving around our mural festival, Wall to Wall, which happens yearly in September. Um, so we're hosting a fundraiser along with this show to raise money for our big projects this year. And then we're really looking down the road to some big uh, projects, big walls, um, trying to create a dialogue across Canada um, on the, uh, the contemporary street art scene. So um, as I was kind of saying before, instead of potentially just bringing in, you know, a big artist who Winnipeggers maybe haven't heard of and getting them to paint on a wall, we're focusing on building communities. So we're building a grassroots street art movement, not from the ground up, it's definitely there. We're um, helping to um, develop skills for artists, getting more um, kind of traditional contemporary artists, giving them the skills to be able to paint walls. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking kind of at this point, yeah, across Canada to make some connections and bring some people in from out of town. We'll be having two, two visiting groups of artists from Toronto this September, and we hope to continue the dialogue from there.